What's going on guys? Welcome to another Jeep movie review. I uh, just got out of the movie Knock at the Cabin. I have all my Buck stuff on because I was actually working the movie 80 for Brady, just opening up, getting it going. But in the theater, literally right next to us, uh, we were also screening Knock at the Cabin. I opted to see Knock at the Cabin. Sorry, Tom Brady. I had no desire to see that movie 80 for Brady and I'm glad I didn't and that I chose what I did. I believe I chose wisely. So obviously with my videos, what I like to do is do a little reaction, let you know how I felt about the movie, and then I will kind of dive into the spoilers at the end of this video. So no spoilers up front. You're just gonna get my initial reaction to the movie, what I thought of it, and then I will give you ample time. If you don't wanna know any spoilers, I'll let you know when I'm gonna be getting into the spoilers. Uh, so you can back out of the video if you choose not to hear about it. So, Knock at the Cabin. If you're like me, I read the book that it's based off of. It's based off the book uh, Cabin at the End of the World, uh, which I thought was a great, great book I up until the end. Um, without giving any spoilers to the book, uh, I just don't like ambiguous endings. The endings that are open to interpretation. To me, it's a form of lazy writing. And when you have such a great book, I loved every second of that book up until the end. And they just leave you kind of wondering at the end. So you don't really get that closure. And that, I don't like that, you know, uh, kind of like Inception, even though I think they kind of cracked uh, like how Inception ends. But regardless, this movie is fantastic. I actually think it's one of M. Night Shyamalan's best movies since Sixth Sense. I thought, I think it would have been more intense and suspenseful for me had I not read the book. I think that was a downfall uh, for it. No, no fault of the movie whatsoever because anyone who has not read the book Cabin at the End of the World is going to feel every bit of suspense in this movie. And I do think anyone that did read the book might not get as much of that suspense because you kind of know what's coming now the movie follows i'd say roughly about 80 to 90 percent of the book which was great and everything that was different is exactly what i wanted to be different from the book versus the movie dave batista wow we we get you know we met Dave Batista from the WWE from wrestling, and then made a big debut as Drax, which I love his character Drax. I'm gonna be sad to see him not be Drax anymore after this, but he has come such a tremendous long way from where he came from. This movie, if you've read the book, he is Leonard to a T. I don't think there's anybody else that could have played his character Leonard better than Dave Batista. He's menacing, he's big, he's huge, but he's got a kind heart. And you, you kind of grow to, to like him. And when you're not supposed to, and when you see the movie, or if you've read the book, you know what I mean. I, I don't want to go any further than that. But he he plays this menacing character, menacing looking character. But at heart and in the inside, he's just a very nice person. And the way Dave Batista balances that is fantastic. Everyone in that movie is great. And especially when I forgive me, I don't know the the actress's name, and I. I wish I did. I'll have to look it up and give her the credit. But the little girl who plays Wen is fantastic. I mean, the characters portray the the actors and actresses portray their characters perfectly as they were in the book, and I was blown away by that. You know, usually they say um, book is better than the movie. I thought this was just as good, if not better, than the book. Uh, the so I highly recommend it it is very suspenseful read the book too um, just know that you're going to love every second until the end unless you like those like, like an ambiguous ending uh, you know it's open to interpretation but like that's the way that book ends um, unfortunately and that's a minor spoiler for the book but um, 
I'm still a little sour over that. So, get, read the book, but definitely go see the movie. I, I really, really liked it way more than I thought I was going to. And like I said, they, what they changed from the book is exactly what I was hoping they would change after reading the book going into this movie. So, with that, I'm going to get into what they did change if you've read the book and kind of go into more detail about the movie. So, this is your cue to back out and X out, click out, tap out, whatever you want to not know any spoilers because spoilers are incoming in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so obviously we know if you've read the book, you know the book is about the end of the world or what could be the end of the world. If you've seen the trailer, you know that the three of them, uh, the two husbands, Andrew and Eric and Wen, have to decide if they want to sacrifice one or the other to save the world, uh, to save humanity. So, Dave Batista, uh, Ron from Harry Potter, I uh, don't know his, that name, I can't, uh, can't think of it on the top of my head, but uh, those, those four that come into the house and meet Eric, Wen, and Andrew, not meet, but force themselves into the house, um, re pretty much represent the four horsemen is, what I, is the way I took it. Uh, the four of them had visions and they all didn't know each other prior to this. They set up a message board and they end up, their visions pretty much tell them where they're going to meet and they meet. They're all wearing the same clothes that they saw in their visions. They're all having the same visions of how the world's going to end. Their mission is to get to this family and have, make them sacrifice one of the three of them to save humanity. So they meet them, they force themselves into the house, they break in, um, and it's super intense, very, very intense. And so if you read the book, what happens is if the three of them, uh, Eric, Andrew, or Wen, decide to not sacrifice one or the other, they have four chances, then one of these other guys have to kill one of their guys. Not them that they're trying to convince to you know, make a sacrifice. They have to then kill one of their own, uh, one of the four of them. So, uh, Ron, the red, uh, the redhead guy. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Um, can't think of his name at the moment, but he's the first one to go. And in the book, the, the kills are brutal. So I was wondering if they were going to show it, but a lot of the kills are off screen or it's like a very quick, very quick cut scene type thing, or you see it in the background and so you don't see all of it, but you know what happens. So he's the first one to go. Then the uh, the other, the white girl that's there, she's um, she's the second one to go because the the family does not want to sacrifice anybody. But each time someone one of them dies, a plague is unleashed into the world. So the first one is a tsunami that kills a bunch of people off the coast of it comes off the coast of Oregon. We see the video footage of this huge tsunami just coming over the coast floods everywhere so because they said no we're not going to sacrifice one of us and the whole time they're trying to talk them out of not killing the uh not having to do this they think they're delusional all this but then these guys are convincing them that no this is real so you're constantly going back and forth as to what's real what's not real are these guys telling the truth it gets very very suspenseful so then um the one girl's killed and after that, they kind of break free from their chairs and uh, Wen escapes, but then Leonard finds her, brings her back in, and Andrew has a gun in the car. He's able to escape, get to the gun, and then the one other girl comes in, uh, runs off after he gets the gun because he has, almost shoots her. And then at one scene, she comes back in and she's running into the house at him and then Andrew shoots her. So then Leonard has to kill her and then, but after the second girl dies, I'm sorry, I'm kind of jumping all over the place. I do this when I get excited, but after the second girl dies, uh, a plague is uh, unleashed into the world. It's kind of like a COVID-19 type thing. It's uh, X9, I think is what they, they call the uh, disease or something. And it's targeting little kids for the most part. And it's killing a bunch of little kids. So you see a bunch of kids in the hospital and they're dying. And they're seeing all this on the news, but then they say that it's a pre-programmed type thing and that you knew this was going to happen and that the tsunami before that uh, you knew was going to happen. That's why you keep looking at your watch, blah, blah. So 
But then the other lady comes in and Andrew ends up shooting her and then Leonard ends up killing her. And after that, uh, one of the sayings is, that's going to happen is uh, shards of glass will fall from the sky and into the earth. So then all of a sudden we see all these planes, over 700 planes of uh, crashed down and a bunch of people that were in the planes obviously died. And so they are now starting to look at each other like, okay, what is going on? Is this coincidence or what? So then they still decide they don't want to sacrifice one another, even though Eric is on the verge of thinking he's got a concussion from when they originally broke into the house and they got into a scuff fight and he hits his head. And then in part of the movie, you see like a glimpse that he sees like a light and he can't tell what it is, if it's the sun or not. But then he's also starting to convince himself that, you know, maybe he was an angel or he saw somebody and it's a sign that, okay, this is real. Uh, so he's starting to think that, but then Andrew's telling him, no, it's your concussion. You got a brain bleed, you know, you're, you're hallucinating. So they go back and forth dealing with that. So now only Leonard's left, Dave Bautista's character's left. In the book, um, that it, it plays out differently. Uh, so up to this point, towards the end of the movie, it pretty much follows the book until about the last 30 minutes or so. In the book, Wen dies. And I was hoping they would not show that and or change that. And thankfully they do. Wen does not die. In the book, what happens is Andrew with the gun gets uh, starts wrestling around with uh, Leonard, Dave Bautista's character, and the trigger is pulled while they're wrestling, and it shoots one in the eye, and it kills her. It doesn't count as a sacrifice in the book, so they still have to sacrifice one of the others if they're going to do that, if they want this to work. So, Wen doesn't die, She, um, but then as since Leonard's the last person in the movie to be alive out of the four of them, the four horsemen, which is what, is what they are essentially are bringing the end of the world. Uh, he sits outside and he's got like this little razor type thing. And he's like, I want to do this outside if you're not going to decide who you're going to sacrifice. So, um, when goes up to this tree house, not to watch. And then Eric and Andrew are sitting there watching him, watching, uh, Leonard in the back porch and he tells him you know how he teaches basketball and the reason he's doing this is because he doesn't want the his you know he loves these kids and their laughter and everything like if they knew how he felt maybe they would sacrifice one of them to to stop this from happening so again Eric and Andrew do not want to sacrifice one or the other so Dave Batista slits his throat and he dies and so before Dave Batista Leonard's character uh, dies he says if I do this you only have a few minutes to decide if you're still going to do this or not so he slits his throat you see him bleed out and so Eric and Andrew look at each other and Eric is convinced that this is real this is like the world is about to end and Andrew's convincing him no it's not no like we can do this so we're gonna be fine so but you can tell andrew's also battling the conflict of is this real or not you know are we all gonna die can i save you know how can we save when and eric is wanting to be the one to sacrifice himself so they're eric and andrew are sitting there and eric is like telling andrew you know i'm thinking happy thoughts i'm seeing in my head that you know, when grows old and she finds someone she loves and you're with her and you're taking care of her. And he's like, if I want to do this, I want to go wherever I'm supposed to go thinking happy thoughts. So in the book, what happens is when's dead and they're carrying when, and Andrew has the gun, Eric and Eric in the book is trying to convince Andrew to pull the trigger and kill him but in the book none of that happens they just it's pretty much presumed that they're going they're walking down the road with holding when and you don't know in the book if the world ends or if they live it's just kind of left open to your interpretation there's a storm going on and they just kind of walk off into the distance and you decide what you think happens so i didn't like that to me that's lazy writing and i some people like it and that's just not my thing that's my opinion so and that's fine. If you like it, cool, you know. But in the movie, as 
Eric is telling Andrew all this that he wants to, you know, go this way and, you know, just or he wants to go thinking happy thoughts. All of a sudden you hear a gunshot as they're holding each other. And then the screen flips back and Andrew's still standing. Eric's on the floor. So Andrew kills Eric and then all of a sudden everything stops. There's light. There's still a little bit of lightning. It strikes the tree. It strikes the house with the storm going on after Dave Batista, uh, Leonard, Leonard dies. Uh, so after Leonard dies, all the storm comes rolling in, lightning, fire. And so once Andrew kills Eric as a sacrifice, it, start, uh, it starts raining. Or it was raining before, but there's lightning still hits the house. It catches on fire. He goes out and gets Wen. Uh, out of the treehouse, when obviously knows what happens, you know, did daddy stop everyone from dying? And he just kind of looks at her. So, and then they, they walk off, they get to the Leonard's truck and they find a gas station and they see that the plague has stopped. No, people have stopped dying. Planes are landing safely. Uh, the flooding has resided. So, and then you hear like someone talking and say, I love you so much. Like, I don't know what's going on, but I love you. So it's just, it gives you a happy ending. Like, you know, the world's not going to end and Andrew and when live on and the whole world lives on. So I liked the closure to that. Oh, also, um, Redman, which is who the redheaded actors, uh, plays in the book. It's, they make us they make it known that uh, it's O'Bannon is another guy that attacked Andrew way back when which they start putting together thinking oh we were targeted um in the book they don't really disclose if it's actually O'Bannon because they're like oh no I recognized him after he died like he's the one that attacked me and everyone knew him as Redman not O'Bannon and in the book no one had their wallets on him it was left back at the truck uh, down the road and under a rock and but Andrew finds his wallet on him and it sure enough says O'Bannon this is the guy that actually attacked him so in the book it makes it like is it really O'Bannon is it you know is it or is it Redmond this is a completely different guy that looks like him so they squash that and they confirm that it is O'Bannon actually so then it makes you think okay well maybe they were targeted but I, I liked how they closed the loop on that I like closure in movies and books so I'm not a big ambiguous guy. I just, you know, tell me what it is. There's, there's no twist to this, which I think in that Shyamalan's movies, they always have twists and he does not, there's no twist in this. Like it's straight, it ends the way it's supposed to end. And I really liked that. I do think this is M. Night Shyamalan's best movie since Sixth Sense, uh, to be completely honest. I loved the Sixth Sense. I was, that, that had a twist in it, but it was good. But all the other movies have not lived up to it. I've liked his movies up until the end with the twist. I'm like, I know, but this is, there's no twist. Like you, you get a closed ending. There's no twist turns, whatever. Like it's just suspense, straight chilling suspense. And it ends the way it wants to end, which is great. And he does make a cameo like he always does. He plays a news reporter. I think, I think it was like a weatherman. No, no. He was doing an infomercial is what it was on the TV screen in the cabin. So you see him for maybe like five seconds. So that's his little, that's his little cameo that he makes in the movie. So I recommend seeing the movie guys. If you, um, if you read the book, like I said, it might take some of that suspense away from you, but I do think to see Dave Batista's progression in his acting i think it was great watching that i still felt suspenseful in in this movie at some points because they did change it up a little bit and i really really liked the ending to this so i highly recommend checking it out i don't think you won't like it it's it's a good movie it's it's not like oscar worthy or anything like that but it's good it, it, it's a great suspenseful m night Shyamalan movie and it's a little bit different than what he's put out and i think I think that's a good thing because I have not really liked what he's put out recently. Um, old and all that stuff like that. Just yeah. uh, the, the endings felt cheap. The twist didn't work out for me, but this is, this is good. So thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you got any comments, leave them down below. I'll try to answer whatever I can. Uh, I'll constantly keep checking it. If I don't answer right away, I'm sure I'll get back to it eventually. So like I said, 
And if there's something you didn't like and you want me to do something a little bit different, again, like I said, constructive criticism, I, I love that stuff. So please subscribe, like, share, and I'm really trying to grow this channel and give you guys what you really like. So I'm trying to tune in to what I can to what each one of you like. So appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned for my next video, which will be the unboxings of the Indiana Jones figures which I'll be doing tomorrow. And then I have Ant-Man in two weeks. I believe I'm seeing it. I'm seeing Ant-Man, Quantumania, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumanian on August, no, sorry, February 13th and the 15th. Uh, the press screening, it's just press, is on the 13th. So I'll be able to do a reaction video there, no spoilers, but on the 15th, I should be able to get you guys spoilers for um, Ant-Man, uh, Quantumania. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks again for watching. Have a good night.